When the defining moment comes, either you define the moment or the moment defines you. Either you define the moment, you decided that you're going to not concern yourself with the naysayers, that you're not going to concern yourself with what has happened or what hasn't happened, but you're going to make the commitment to do what you've got to do so that you can have a lifestyle that you've never experienced before. Or the moment defines you and you decide to play it safe. And 20 years from now, you say to yourself, what if I would have taken a chance on myself? What if I would have stayed in the game? What if I would have kept making the phone calls? What if, what if, and what if? The what if mentality is this guy told me, I was a 36 African American Navy SEAL in Navy SEAL history, over 70 years. This guy told me there's only 35 African Americans to ever be a Navy SEAL. He was pretty much telling me, you ain't got what it takes. I took that and said, what if I can be the 36th? But what if I could? What if I could pull off this miracle? How will I feel at the very end if I can defy all the odds? You're in the test of your will right now because life says it has a little more test for you. You can look at your challenge with skill and it will see it just as that challenge or you can look at your challenge with will those exceptional people who are uncomfortable with the times and rise to the challenge because they refuse to allow the chaos around them to determine the conqueror within them i've never met anybody who was terribly creative or gifted or strong in leadership who was also comfortable you must be willing to extend yourself to the limit with no guarantee of success. Every day, you must ask yourself, did I do enough? Prove to yourself today, every day, that you can and will push harder than you wanted to, harder than you felt like pushing, past the point of fatigue and far beyond the point of comfort to that outer edge, to the limits. And on those points, there will be no compromise. Not now, not ever. Young people globally want to be like Elon Musk. What's your advice for that? I think that probably they shouldn't want to be <laughs> you. <laughs> it, it, I think it sounds better than it is. Okay. Um, yeah, it's uh, not as much fun being me as you'd think. I don't know. You don't think so? No. There's definitely, it could be worse for sure. <laughs> but it's, um, I, I, I'm not sure I would, I'm not sure I want to be me. Okay. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> if, You know, I, I think advice, I mean, if you want to make progress in things, I think that um, the, the, the best analytical framework for understanding the future is physics. Um, I'd recommend studying the, uh, the, the thinking process around physics, like not, not just not, not, not the equations. I mean, the equations, certainly they're helpful, but the, the, the way of thinking in physics is the, it's the best framework for understanding things that are counterintuitive. Um, and, um, and, you know, always taking the position that you are some degree wrong and your goal is to be less wrong over time. Um, the, I think one of the biggest mistakes people generally make, and I'm guilty of it too, is wishful thinking. You know, like you want something to be true even if it isn't true. Um, and so you ignore the things that, uh, you, you ignore the real truth because of what you want to be true. Um, this is a very difficult trap to avoid. Um, and like I said, certainly one that I uh, find myself in having problems with. But, but if you just take that approach of you're always to some degree wrong and your goal is to be less wrong.
and, and solicit critical feedback, particularly from friends. Like friends, particularly friends, if somebody loves you, they want the best for you. They don't want to tell you the bad things. Um, so you have to ask them, you know, and say, really, I, I really do want to know. <laughs> and, and then they'll tell you. First say to yourself what you would be, and then do what you have to do. Assemble your life, action by action, and be satisfied if each one achieves its goal. No one can keep that from happening, action by action. If your soul be habitually in practice, you will plead and teach, listen and learn, investigate and meditate. What more is necessary? Does what's happened keep you from acting with justice, generosity, self-control, sanity, prudence, honesty, humility, straightforwardness, and all other qualities that allow a person's nature to fulfill itself? So remember this principle when something threatens to cause you pain. The thing itself was no misfortune at all. To endure it and prevail is great good fortune. I think failure is bad. Um, I don't think it's good, um, mm -hmm. but if, if, if something is important enough, then you, you do it even though the risk of failure is high. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so I think my advice if somebody is in, wants to start a company is they should bear in mind that the most likely outcome is, is that it's not going to work. And they should reconcile themselves to that pos strong possibility. Um, and they should only do it if they feel that they, they're, they are really compelled to do it, you know. Um, because it's 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 gonna the, the way starting a company works is like usually in the beginning it's the very beginning it's kind of fun um, and then it's really hellish for, for a number of years. You talked about chewing glass. Yeah, there's there's a, fr a friend of mine who's a successful entrepreneur um, and uh, started actually his career around the same time as I did. And he, he has a good 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 phrase. His name's Billy. Uh, um, he said, yeah, you're starting a company is like eating glass and staring into the abyss. Um, and... Can you agree with that? Generally true. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And, 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 and if you don't eat the glass, you're not going to be successful. The impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way. Believe it or not, obstacles can actually be the thing that propels you forward in your career your relationships and your life. Rather than getting shut down by all the stuff that pops up to block your path, learn to understand impediments as essential tools for achieving your goal. While this might seem contradictory, you've likely experienced this phenomenon in your own life. If you've ever overcome an obstacle to reach a goal, you know that the struggle in climbing over that wall taught you priceless lessons that helped you become the person you are now and further refine what it is that you want to achieve in life. It's easy to think about life as a series of fixed happenings. You graduate from high school. You go to college. You begin a career. You get married and start a family. While there's nothing wrong with having a map of your future, it's important to understand that you're going to encounter things along the way that might just fundamentally change the direction you're heading in. As the simplest of examples, let's say, that you are taking a run on some nature trails near your house. During a storm the previous night, however, the path you always take has become problematically flooded. What do you do? Do you turn around? Do you try to bushwhack through the woods around the path? Or do you change your route on the fly and explore a part of the woods you've never been to before? If you chose either option two or three, the impediment to your action actually advanced your action. You likely experienced a new and rejuvenating headspace too, either navigating through the woods without a trail or running down a path you've never considered exploring before.